Hello, my name is Mark Pachaboski. I work with RAN3D and Ascent doing training and curriculum development. Um, today we're going to take a look at the 3D Experience 2023 Mechanical Systems Design app uh, using this in conjunction with the Assembly Design app uh, to set up an assembly to create a uh, mechanism representation. Uh, we're not actually going to simulate this mechanism, but we do want to go through the steps of how we create the joints, uh, how we define the joints with the limits that we want so that parts aren't moving completely out of uh, reasonable locations uh, for the simulation that we're trying to define. Um, we want to also take a look at the difference between transient and normal mode and its effect on the mechanism and how the parts return back to their original positions. Uh, and just really the, the build-up or the setup of the assembly so that we can get to the simulation. Uh, the simulation for this will actually be formed in a separate video. So, uh, first let me take a look at our assembly. Uh, we've got a simple assembly. Uh, relatively simple. Uh, it's supposed to be a mechanical arm. It's got two different kind of elbows to it. Um, the parts are different colors only so that you can tell the difference between the different parts. Uh, we're able to rotate uh, 360 degrees around the vertical axis here between the blue and the gray base. Uh, we're able to do the same thing between the light blue and the green and the same thing between the gray and the green here. Well, they're able to rotate um, 180 degrees this way and 180 degrees this way. Um, um, relative to vertical to be able to go side to side between those elbows that we have. Now, I left one part not connected um, just because I want to show how those connections were defined, those engineering connections. Uh, currently, uh, I'm in the Mechanical Systems Design app, which from this app, if I turn off some of these displays, um, I can create engineering connections. So I can create a generic engineering connection here. I can build them using the predefined layouts where we have Revolut and Cylindrical and so on. Or if I was to switch, go into the Compass, go to the Assembly Design app, which here is where most assemblies are created in the first place, we can build those same tools. So I'm going to create a Revolut for this finger. Um, I'm going to use the Revolut template creating a engineering connection where there's a coincident between two axes, a contact between two planes, and an angle that is controlled, meaning this is what we're going to be able to open and close and manipulate between two planes. So I select on that template that populates this engineering connection with all the different types of constraints that we might want. And I'm right now none of them are being fulfilled, so they're all in red. I'm going to click on this curved surface to grab the axis of the cylinder and grab this curved surface to do the same. It brings that over and is now being um, fulfilled, so it turns green, saying that it's happy with the situation. You have to still have to look and see if it's what you wanted, but it's no longer complaining that it doesn't have the references that it needs. Next, we're going to do a contact. Select this big flat face and... I can hover over this, hit the up and down arrow on my keypad and be able to toggle through everything underneath my cursor. And that grabs the face on the other side of this hand component to be able to make those two contact one another. And angle, uh, I'm going to find that finger, which looks like it's finger number one. I'll expand it and we'll double check some of these planes. There's a plane there. I'd rather use this one, so we'll go with the XY plane. And on the hand component, there's an XY plane as well. Just double checking, it's down here, but it's going to be parallel to the one I selected, so I'll grab that, and that'll base my angle off of it. Now, currently, my limits are set to no limit. So I can change this to, it'll default to negative 360 or 360. That's going to be a whole lot more movement than I really want out of this. For right now, we'll leave it alone, but I'll come back and show you how we can adjust those limits after the fact if we realize something is just performing in a way that we didn't intend. 
Now, it is going to ask me if I want to be able to set a uh, interference status check to contact. So if it's contacting other features, we'll say yes. And I'll minimize the tree a little bit to get that out of the way. And I'll hide this plane that I showed. So we can see the basics of this assembly. Now, in the engineering connections, I had already gone through and renamed many of them to help me understand where they were at. You can always select on one of the names and see which parts highlight, and it'll let you know, okay, this is the connection between this um, bottom plate or base and this uh, component here. Well, I called that the bottom wrist. We've got a bottom wrist, we've got a middle wrist, and we have a top wrist connection. Uh, we have two elbows, so I have a bottom elbow and a top elbow. Again, just something that helps me or anyone else looking at this understand what's going on. Now, I have this last one here um, called Revolute 2, just because I'd renamed everything else, so it renamed it back to Revolute 2. I'm going to right-click and go to Properties, and instead of calling this Revolute 2, we're going to call this Right Finger Connection. Okay, now these are out of date, which means they could be out of position. I'm going to hit the update command, and that refreshes it so that those features are um, shown in the update location. Uh, nothing moved, so I was up to date to begin with. Next, what I'm going to do is uh, switch over to the Mechanical Systems Design app. This will give me the set of tools that I need to be able to actually test these engineering connections, converting them into joints instead of just connections. So I'm going to uh, come in here and type in mechanical, or at least part of it, and I get mechanical systems design. This app will help me set up the assembly for the simulation. And then we also have mechanical systems experience. This will actually allow me to test um, and run the simulation. More, th more so than just testing. So, uh, I switched to the Mechanical Systems Design app. I now am going to come down here to mechan Mechanism Representation. And this is going to create a mechanism representation. This is the mechanism that's going to have the joints derived from each of these engineering connections. Now, you can rename this to be something more meaningful. I can call it Mechanical Arm Mechanism Representation or whatever I need. It does give it a unique name with this number at the end. I'll leave it the way it is, and come over here to Mechanism Preferences, include all kinematic connections into the mechanism. So those are these engineering connections here. Do I want them all? Otherwise, I have to manually create them. I'm going to leave that turned on. Create all possible kinematic commands. Well, for all these revolutes, each one has a command that allows it to rotate to a specific value, an angle. I'm going to leave that turned on. If I hit OK, it creates that mechanism representation. It places a joints node with all of those um, engineering connections that we're back here defined as joints. And we have commands. Now, the commands do reference those names that I renamed, or you could rename these if it makes it helpful. Again, right-click and go to Properties. Now, to test this, I'm going to come down here, and first I'm going to click on the Mechanism Manager. This allows me to look at all of the engineering connections, uh, allows me to see if they're controlled or driven, which this Revolute is driven by an angle. You'll find that all of these are. And I could turn them off if I don't need them, but currently it tells me that the status is that the mechanism is fully defined and can be simulated. If this wasn't, I would have to work on this to be able to make sure all my degrees of freedom are accounted for in some way, shape, or form. Hit OK. Now, I'll come over here to Mechanism Player. The Mechanism Player shows each one of those controlled commands. Now, I can sit here and adjust this one. Command 1 is the revolute between the base and this dark blue. It spins 360 degrees. Now, I, I customized those limits beforehand to only allow for a 360 degree rotation. If you don't customize them, they look like this, negative 360 to 360. Now, if I play with that, it goes two full revolutions either way. Now, I can make the argument that I want it to go two times or I want it to be limited. We That's up to you and how you want your design. Um, we've got other limits here, like this finger. I've adjusted to 
uh, negative 15 and a 30, 130 degree. So at zero is where it started. You can also just type in zero here if you have a hard time getting the slider to cooperate. Um, it can go negative 15 degrees, so it tilts in until the middle. And if it collides with something later on, we'll deal with that within the simulation. But I don't want it to go 360 degrees all the way around in that direction. And then if I go the other way, I want it to open, but I want it to go up into a limit, and we put it that limit at 360. Now, I said the other finger I wanted to be able to control in a similar method, but I haven't changed the limit, so obviously it just keeps spinning. Now, I'm going to hit close. The positions of the models go back to their original state. Um, I know that it was the right finger uh, joint, or engineering connection, which creates the right finger joint. I'm going to double click on that, expand angle, and we'll change the limit. So this was negative 115 and upper limit of 130. Okay, it is outdated. I'm going to hit the update button. I'll click on the mechanism player. And I can now see that that works the same way, tilts in 15 degrees or comes out 130. And we can do that one to do the same. Now, with each one of these, as I play with them, obviously there's positions that wouldn't work. There's a collision happening there. And right now, we're not doing the simulation. We're only trying to test to make sure that functionally these are doing what they were intended to do. You may want this to spin 360 degrees, but it may not allow it to in certain positions. Um, again, we'll deal with that. But we can, if we play with this and get into a weird position, if I hit reset, it sets it all back to its original stop, spot. No matter what, you can always hit that button as long as this is still open. If I customize it in such a way that I realize later that, well, I may have customized and I hit close here, it restores it back to its position. That may or may not happen depending on your settings. If you right click in your display, go to display and turn on the app options. This can also be found under tools. There's a setting here. One of them is always turned on. It's either transient mode or normal mode. Transient mode is turned on for me. That means that all the customizations that I've done, when I hit close, it always goes back to this same position. If I choose the normal mode, it tells you a message that it's going to affect the simulation. Now, if I go in and test this, Move something so you can actually see the changes. Now when I hit close, I didn't hit reset, it stays in that position. Okay, if you realize you want it to go back, you've got more work cut out for you because you're going to have to change this back to transient mode. But before you do that, you want to set it back to its position. Uh, I'm going to click on this button. I'm going to zero these values out because they all started at zero, that put it back in its position. Now I'll hit close. Now I can set it back to the transient mode. And any customizations that I make are going to reset them back to that position. Okay, with those customizations, I may need to hit update. But this assembly is now ready for a simulation to be created and to switch it over into the Mechanical Systems Experience app, which we'll see later on. Hope that helps.